Hello and welcome. A gruesome war crime has come to light and Russia is doing its best to prevent Russian soldiers, Russian mobilized personnel and Russian conscripts to avoid serving in the future. This and more in this situation report. There has been a new uh, act, new acts of barbarism have surfaced. Among that was uh, images of heads of Ukrainian soldiers being on spikes that were on display. That's a war crime. Even the mutilation of uh, deceased enemies is forbidden, even if you don't kill them. But that is not the big thing. What you see here is a screenshot from a video that was circling around that shows the beheading of a Ukrainian soldier by uh, Russian forces. In the full video, you see that the the perpetrator, the the person cutting off the head, has the white band around his leg, and uh, it it clearly shows a beheading. What you see here is obviously I can't show you the video, and um, it at the same time one of the channels posting it. I found this screenshot here shows that a huge part of the followers don't feel disgusted by it, but actually appreciate content like this. Um, the video in its totality shows the complete act from the beginning to in the end holding up the head of the deceased uh, victim and um, while CNN is writing here it is heavily blurred looked like it was filmed during the summer it per uh, it per purports to show a Russian fighter using a knife to cut off the head of a Ukrainian um, soldier a voice at the beginning of the video suggests the victim might have still been alive when the attack began as I've seen the unblurred video you see the victim struggling you see his legs uh, moving you see that he was definitely still alive so that was a beheading of a person that was alive supposedly done by Wagner mercenaries on the front line we have um, the usual Things. We have reports of attacks by the Russians north of the Sevyaski Donetsk. They are specifically mentioning uh, Markivka and Chervonopopivka, west of it, they have attacked. Russians are also saying they attacked at Terni, uh, Yampolivka and Torske here. Also attacks from Krimina in the south and southwest, uh, especially Kuzmyne, south of it, was reported by the Ukrainians. I cannot confirm any territorial gains, though, in the last few days either. Uh, south of the Sivetsky Donetsk, we have reports of Russian attacks on Bilohorivka and in the direction of um, Vyachno Kamianske. No confirmed changes in the possession of the area here. We have a report that the Russians actually gained some ground in um, Sacco Ivanzetti. And in case you wonder why that sounds so Italian, I checked it here. Those were two Italian anarchists that were executed, uh, were immigrants to the US and were executed in 1927. Quite an interesting read if you, their, their story is so supposedly there was, they weren't really guilty of what they, what they did. And um, like, just if you're interested in the topic, read the Wikipedia article. It is quite detailed and quite interesting in case you were you you should be interested in this. The Russians are also claiming they are gaining some ground in Orihovo, um, Orihovo Vasilivka. I have not uh, seen any confirmation of that, so though so far we can only see the claim of the Russians. We don't have any proof of this. There have been also Russian attacks in Rihorivka, in the direction of Rihorivka and Bodanivka, both here. Uh, no confirmed successes in this regard, and there has been fighting close to Hormove. We have a video here showing Russian. Uh, uh, showing both sides fighting with each other. Those are Russian soldiers. Here are Ukrainian soldiers. Um, the fighting in itself ends with a fatality that is visible, so I can't show you the image, but it was localized, this fight to have happened here. From what I see, the video doesn't show the full extent, but I'm pretty sure the Ukrainians won the engagement. So what we can see is that the, the Russians have pushed towards the road here at Romove more or less here. Here have has been fighting before and we now have image proof that at least at that point where the video was taken, Ukrainians were still controlling the situation. So the road here might still be kind of usable if you accept that you can be shelled, shot at and shot at with ATGM while using it. 
in Bakhmut itself, there are more Russian successes being reported. Uh, we see now with the map changes, uh, now even the pro-Ukrainian deep state map is acknowledging the loss of the stadium here, which was highly contested, the area. Um, I cannot fully confirm where exactly the Russians have gained some ground. Some of it is contradicting, some of it isn't really telling much. Um, we have some geolocalizations, but in total, what we can say is that the Russians are slowly creeping forward. So they still continue to gain block after block but at a very slow pace the control of Bakhmut is now in the vast majority in Russian hands depending on whom you follow which which analysis you take which map you look at the then the Ukrainians control now 20 to 25 percent of Bakhmut the rest is being being captured has been captured by the Russians south of it um south of Bakhmut, we have reports of Russian successes that have been geolocalized at, at Ozaryanivka. Um, here, the Russians have gained some ground in the area southwest of Kurdyumivka. They've already they had already crossed the canal here and they've advanced somewhat in this area we see videos of shells hitting Russian positions so in this area there should be some small uh, gains by the Russians as well. At uh, Avdivka, the fighting is also continuing. We have reports of attacks at Novo Kalinove, at uh, Stepove on Avdivka itself, in the direction of Siverne, in Pervomaiske, and at Nevelske. The Russians are claiming they have gained some ground at um, Krasnohorivka, which is um, here. So supposedly they gained something here. I cannot confirm anything that, like this. They also claim they gained some ground in Novo Bakhmutivka here. Also no confirmation from my side possible. In Makivka, the fighting is continuing. We have an interesting video here that shows an abandoned uh, Russian tank which uh, circled around a little. And the interesting part about this is it was geolocalized, so we can see where it was. But what is interesting here is that it has a so-called, which uh, the internet established the name for, a cope cage, because it's like a metal cage on top of the turret that was introduced to defeat, um, to defeat javelin missiles. Um, supposedly, it's useless as, at this. This is why it's being called the cope cage as we um, as it's to cope with the situation. Now, what we see here is on top of the so-called cope cage, the Russians have established uh, contact one, contact one explosive reactive armor. That's actually fairly interesting. I have not seen a full re conclusion by someone else who is more knowledgeable than me whether that's actually useless. Because in my mind, it should probably have less of an effect than if it's if it's mounted on solid steel. Because the explosive, if it's if it's fired off, obviously um, moves the path of least resistance, and that to some degree will probably towards the turret of the tank itself, as uh, the cope cage is not the most strong, the the strongest, the most stable. Uh, installation it's not it's not real armor of a tank but on the other hand the negative effects of it should be negligible to a certain degree unless the tank turret is open um, but if you get hit by something from above while your tank turret is open you're probably in bigger trouble anyways so if the hatches are closed that should i guess should maybe damage some optics on top could damage some optics but it's safe if it saves the tank and the crew instead of allowing a penetration through it it might actually be useful so it would be interesting to see if that has already been used and if it if you find videos of it uh, being hit something like this uh, it could actually be a functioning system but i cannot fully confirm it at this point um, it was geolocalized here so this is as you can see more or less uh, in the middle of, of southern part of Marinka, where the bridge is. So when we look at the at the um, map here, this was more or less localized here, which is already considered to be under Russian control for quite a while. Uh, other than that, I don't have reports about fighting at Vulida, and there is a report of of Ukrainian attacks. The Russians are saying at Novosilka, the Ukrainians have attacked. In the southern front, um, we have reports that Berislav was attacked with guided bombs from SU-35. The um, Let me quickly turn off my phone. 
uh, that that um, Berislav was attacked with guided bombs from Su-35. So this is here. We heard in the past that those bombs supposedly have a range of 50 to 80 kilometers. Maybe I'll find the time to make a video specifically about them as soon as I found more information as well. Those bombs seem to be jerry-rigged but fairly successful. But the range, as said in the past, indicates that um, it just means that the Russians launch it from far away from the front line as they are still afraid of the Ukrainian uh, of the Ukrainian air defense. If a, if a guided bomb with 50 to 80 kilometers range hits basically directly at the front line, it, it's a sign of the the um, Russians launching it somewhere from here and not using the range to strike deep into Ukrainian territory. This can change, obviously, though, as soon as they've managed to suppress the Ukrainian air defense. Or to, at that point, this will allow the Russians to strike further deep deeper into Ukrainian held territory. Other than that, not much happening on the southern front. The usual reports about additional fortification lines that have been recorded or that have been seen on satellite. And we have reports of artillery fire um, and artillery engagements by both sides along the whole southern front. Generally, to talk about the front line, what is developed, the Russian Ministry of Defense has, in a surprising acknowledgement, uh, mentioned the Wagner forces uh, that they are doing the main uh, the main uh, fighting in Bakhmut itself. They say the VDV, the air assault units, are supporting Wagner in the north and in the south of the city. Um, this is surprising because so far Wagner was more or less ignored and they were called that it's volunteers in assault attach attachments that are doing the fighting in Bakhmut or that supported the Russian armed forces. Wagner was not specifically mentioned. So at some degree, there seemed to be some rapprochement between, between uh, Prigozhin, Wagner and the Russian Ministry of Defense. At least it looks like it. But what we still can see is that the attacks in the north and in the south of Bakhmut don't seem to be, uh, be, be done with the same uh, engagement, with the same vigorousness as the attacks in Bakhmut itself. That, so that indicates that the Russian armed forces don't want to force an encirclement of Bakhmut, a turning maneuver or a complete encirclement, but they are, seem to be more or less happy with Wagner doing the house-to-house -house fighting and Wagner suffering the casualties. So while there might have been some rapprochement between the two sides, it seems that the uh, Russian side is still absolutely happy if Wagner is being attrited to a point where they might no longer play a massive role in this war. Generally, the um, the losses, what we can see, are uh, still massively on the side of Wagner and the Russian side seems to be safeguarding its troops and trying to keep the, the most of the casualties in the side of Wagner. General uh, Colonel General Sirsky, the commander of the Ukrainian ground forces, said that Wagner is by now so depleted that the Russian had sent Spetsnaz and VDV as a reinforcement. Now, this I don't fully understand if he means that they are also operating in Bakhmut now, even though we had reports of Spetsnaz fighting alongside Wagner in Bakhmut a couple of weeks ago. But um, basically, the Ukrainian side is more or less confirming the overall story. When it comes to the mobilization, we have big news for Russia. Russia is introducing a digital database for all its citizens that are capable or like eligible, I think is the word for military service. For this, they take all the publicly, all the available data from various state run uh, and state accessible sources. For instance, who has foreign citizenship, they take medical data, they take education situation where they live, they take taxes, uh, whether they have been sentenced in courts, and they take insurances, all of this to allow for a clear identification of, of individuals and to categorize them. This will make it much harder to avoid military service in future. And from now on, if you are being called up, you have to force your, you are forced to report within 20 days to a recruitment office and you are no longer allowed to leave Russia. Um, this will mean if if you pass, if the time passes and you have not reported up, you lose your driver's license, you are no longer allowed to drive a car and you are no longer allowed to buy and sell real estate and you're no longer allowed to take credit or start a company. All of this will obviously show um, shows that this will should is supposed to make uh, fleeing harder, much, much harder if you can't uh, turn your real estate into money. If you're not allowed to cross the border, if you're not allowed to drive, you can't hide 
it's much harder for you to hide in the future. Um, this is obviously meant at, at avoiding uh, draft dodging. And um, also with the changes now from now on, it's as soon as all of this is in place, the call-ups will be digital. So far, they had to, still had to be in personal. So to be called up for military service, a recruitment officer had to find you, physically find you, and physically hand you a piece of paper, which made draft dodging quite possible, at least for the more affluent people. Obviously, if you're a poor villager um, somewhere in the countryside, you don't have much to flee to except running into the forest. So in this regard... So in this regard, this has changed the rules to the degree that um, draft dodging by simply not being physically present, by not registering your apartment and things like this will no longer be possible in, in normal circumstances. So far, just hiding was absolutely sufficient to avoid military service. Um, this will no longer be the case. When it comes to the political sphere, we have reports that Prigozhin supposedly wants to take over control over the A Just Russia for Truth party. He supposedly made some agreement with the um, head of the party. Uh, that's at least according to the opposition media Medusa. The members of the unit of the party, there are reports that members of the party left it to to start a new party um, in reaction to Prigozhin joining it. The, the claims are that Prigozhin wants to run for the party in St. Petersburg to continue his uh, feud with the governor of St. Petersburg, apparently going to a new level. He really seems to dislike the governor of St. Petersburg. The Duma also introduced, uh, is, is about to introduce a new law that would allow uh, lifelong imprisonment for terrorism and high treason. Lifelong imprisonment and longer, also longer prison times will be possible for terrorism, aiding terrorism, transport sabotage, sabotage of the health infrastructure and organization or participation in a terrorist organization. The interesting part here is that there is no clear definition what terrorism is. So it'll allow a wide leeway to sentence for terrorism, maybe some espionage, financial, logistical support, consulting or any other aid for foreign organizations might also be possible um, that they could be uh, considered terrorism in this regard, especially if those organizations are doing something that is uh, contrary to the intents and purposes of of uh, Russian security agencies and security organizations. This is obviously meant as another step to curb freedom of speech and the individual freedom. They want to uh, create more suppression and they want to create self-censorship. If you do something that, uh, if, if terrorism isn't clearly defined and you are threatened with lifelong imprisonment, then obviously just speaking out can already be really, really dangerous for you. When it comes to the international support, then we have reports that the six Spanish Leopard 2A4, uh, the first six are being handed over in the coming days. Spain, Spain has promised another four Leopard 2A4. They will follow someone later, um, but in close proximity, as far as I understood it, they are currently being maintained. They are currently in the workshops to get combat ready so they can be handed over to the Ukrainian side. And uh, Ukro Boronprom, the Ukrainian uh, state uh, defense company, said that uh, just reported another delivery of 122 millimeter grenades from a NATO uh, country where they are being produced. And uh, this is important because Ukro Boronprom is establishing factories outside of Ukrainian territory. So those factories are Ukrainian run, probably run with Ukrainian personnel, probably with material evacuated from Ukraine to produce in the safety of a third country to then help keep the, the fighting going. And finally, we have an interesting video here that has popped up. This is a Kilo class from uh, Sevastopol. The Kilo class are being used to launch, uh, launch caliber cruise missiles into Ukraine. And as uh, some of you will see, uh, will be kind of surprised as much as I am how much um, nature has taken hold of the hull of the submarine. This is obviously not meant to be, especially not for a submarine. Uh, they have to be regularly cleared, uh, cleaned to make sure that uh, there is no growth on the underside of the boat, which is fairly normal for anything, especially in, in uh, salt water, in seawater. 
uh, this will not only slow it down but this will also make it much more noisy as the hull of a submarine is especially designed to be as as quiet as possible and all the growth on the boat will cause uh, turbulences that increase the noise signature quite significantly this shows us how badly uh, maintained those boats are where the the russians are currently cut at least currently cutting corners obviously we can speculate over the reasons for this obviously this will also not have a direct impact on the war itself because whether or not the kilo class is a little more quiet or not doesn't make a uh, doesn't play much of a role if it's just being used to launch cruise missiles at ukraine and ukraine doesn't have any sub hunters of its own being used against the russian submarines but it's still a kind of a telling sign about the situation and for two Today I want to finish with a interesting video. Because of my work, I watch horrifying videos basically every day. Uh, videos of war crimes, videos. I had to watch the video of the beheading. I had to watch the video of the castration of a Ukrainian soldier somewhat in the past. If I report about them, I think it's my duty to make sure that if I tell those to you, I don't follow uh, obvious um, uh, propaganda. I don't tell you things that don't exist. So if especially horrifying things like this are supposedly happening, I have to confirm that. Also, I'm watching combat footage all the time to gain knowledge about uh, the developments along the front line, to see knowledge uh, of material employed, of tactics being used, of the skill of both sides. So uh, seeing corpses, seeing uh, mutilated bodies, seeing people die all the time is unfortunately a part of my job. If you do something like this for often enough, you get like, um, we, we call it um, uh, boiled down. That's a literal translation from Germany, meaning like basically you get cool in, in some regards. It doesn't touch you emotionally anymore. And so finding this video helped me personally in a big regard because it proves to me myself that I haven't lost my emotions to th due to my job, but that I can still feel because... Is oh okay, this is music. I need to turn this off. That we see Ukrainian soldiers being um, hailed their goodbye at a at a U at a British base, and as you might already hear along my voice, it I feel like um, goosebumps on my neck, and um, I'm deeply touched emotionally by this event, as it shows both the respect among comrades and the acknowledgement from the British side towards comrades from another nation some of which will probably no longer live in the coming weeks or months and um, for me this is deeply touching in in so many ways that i wanted you to to take a part of it because in the horrifying events of this war the i don't know this is something that helped that touched me in a very emotional way and i wanted to allow you to participate in this this was it uh, from me for now of this um, for this situation report. If you enjoy what I do, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment for the algorithm to help the channel grow and show YouTube how much um, this video, this channel should grow. All of this actually really helps. If you're new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. And this channel is only possible because of the support from viewers like you. So if you like to support what I do, please help the channel. Please support the channel by the means in the description. Thank you very much to everyone already doing so. That's it for me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.